Good evening. Hope everyone is well on the darkest time of the year. Um, this is Luke Renda and my channel Feel the Link. Today I'm going to be discussing Christmas, superficial or sacred. Uh, this topic came to me around last year's Christmas and I almost missed the boat again since it's the 22nd today so I thought I'd better stay up and do this and um, I noticed a trend of no Christmas this year once again and I wanted to make sure to get this video out to encourage people to have Christmas celebrate be with your family and friends don't listen to all the propaganda out there. You'll be all right. The darkest time of the year, especially in these dark times, you should be spending it with family and friends. Um, this f first dawned on me that there is some interesting ancient connections with Christmas that nobody had ever told me before, and not many people would think about it. I'm going to bring up a story from the Finnish legend the box saga at the end to tie things together. I'm going to talk about aversion therapy and um, also Odin, Othan, and Father Christmas. Um, this first dawned on me. I was listening to CG and Ike from I Hyperborean Radio, a couple of pagan guys from down in the States, and CG had been raised a pagan. So all of the holidays that he celebrated were his family's traditional pagan holidays. And instead of Father Christmas or Santa Claus, Othan would come and bring gifts. Not an Xbox, not a Discman or any of these technological gifts, but it would be something more handmade, handcrafted, a nice bone knife or a bow, uh, dresses and clothing and stuff like that. And um, as he was describing Othan, he kind of mentioned that he was fairly similar to Odin, and I'm not going to make any hard line uh, confirmations here, but what he said was it was one and the same. And I don't like the syncretism of blending people together, but uh, when I started looking into it, reading my kids' stories of uh, Santa Claus, I noticed a lot of pictures with them with one eye closed, just like Odin plucked out his eye to get a draught of Mimir's well, the fountain of wisdom. And I started to recall that I couldn't find it, but I had this old Christmas card from a few years ago where Santa Claus is in the middle and around the borders of the picture frame were two ravens on either side. Hugin and Munin is what they were called. and the Norse legends of Odin. And then I stumble upon the box saga, but I will get there in a moment. What I want to talk about is why these holidays were celebrated. The solstices and the equinoxes were very important to people living on the land. They knew when to plant. It was the wheel of the year. It's something very real. We have the darkest time of the year. And then there is a pause for three days where the sun does not rise. And then on the 25th, it, it rises a little bit more to bring more light into the world. And so the solstice is celebrated and the 25th, Christmas. With all that's going on now, it's the darkest time of the year. We are also living in very dark times. This Finnish legend will touch on some of it in a moment, but what I want to talk about is celebrating Christmas with your family. It's not a commercialized it's a holiday that corporations came up and pushed on people. That is the aversion therapy that they are using to make you hate your own holidays. They make it, they only give you the superficial parts of it and leave out the sacred parts of it. And what aversion therapy is, is say, here's an example. When parents would catch their kids smoking, they'd say, oh, you want to smoke, eh? Smoke this whole pack. And so they, 
and it will make sense when I get into this box saga what is going on and what I'm talking about. But what they've done with Christmas and all these other holidays, last year they said there's no more Christmas. Well, they're trying to destroy your sacred holidays again. That is what they're doing, but people are buying it. They don't want to buy the gifts. They don't want to do the holidays. They don't want to see family. They're so tired of it because it's been crammed down their throat. That's the aversion therapy part of it. It's absolutely brilliant. This year, get together with your family. See your friends. It's fine. This is part this is a very important day to celebrate. And I'm going to get right into this box saga, actually, because I think I've set it up enough. This is a Finnish legend, the box saga. And it is amazing. I'm not going to go too much into it, because it's so deep and so in-depth. And I don't agree with every single thing in the box saga. I don't know if it's true or not. It comes from this ancient Finnish family, the box but I'm going to read you the story about Santa Claus in the Vox Saga. And it starts in the turbulence of the third Ragnarok, which they date around 1050 AD when the Catholics were coming in to Udenma in the Ringlands, which is their capitals, their main places. And this is how it goes the family left to a safe place called Kajani 500 kilometers north this is where all their people went and moved to and it was a safe place surrounded by forests and swamps and it was too far and difficult for the Catholics to attack the family even moved further north, the royalty of the family. So the people lived a bit further south. The family even lived a little bit further north. For 200 years, they had settled here. But they would go down every once in a while to a speaking rock. Uh, they call it Uko, Ukon Kivi, Uko's Rock. And this actually ties in, interestingly, to the reason why we write Santa Claus letters because the Allfather, who was the king of this Bach family, because he wasn't with his people all the time, he was a little bit further north, so they would write letters, send him letters, and he would come down every year at the Christmas time, and he used to ride around on a carriage led by eight goats. But then when they moved so far north, you couldn't ride a carriage. You had to ride a sleigh but were pulled by eight reindeer. And so here is how it goes. Uko, the Allfather, who used to travel around Udenma in a carriage pulled by eight box, was now seen getting around in a sled pulled by eight reindeer. Although the Catholics destroyed hell and burnt the rest of Udenma to the ground, the legend of Father Christmas was very hard to uproot. This should serve to explain why Father Christmas likes children and gives them presents. All the children of his world are his children, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren, or great-great-grandchildren. The term Christmas refers to the root word crisis, which means large and rapid change. Christ Krishna and Christina are other examples of people who were in the center of a crisis. And when I stumbled upon that, it all started tying in. This All-Father, Father Christmas. They can't get rid of Father Christmas. They can't get rid of our holidays. And so that's where the aversion therapy comes in. They cramp, they spent the last probably only 100 years cramming down the commercialized versions of our sacred holidays cramming them down your throats so that when you grew up it's Christmas the stress 
everything about it. You didn't like, well, get back to your roots. Get back to celebrating the sun. Have a big bonfire outside. That's what the ancients would do. They'd have big bonfires for three days to help the sun return to its higher point, which goes all the way into solstice. So I thought that was a little tidbit of information for everyone. Hope you liked it. The aversion therapy, though, I think it's point on. Why else would they cram this down your throat to the point where you're sick of it? They they want to get rid of Father Christmas. They've been doing this for a thousand years, destroying everyone's holidays, everyone's sacred days. It's longer than that. But they couldn't get rid of this one. So what do they do when they can't get rid of it? They give you so much of it that you can't stand it anymore. It's absolutely brilliant. So don't worry about the cooties. Go visit your family. The beer bug won't get you. Spread the love. Peace.